Hello everyone, welcome to the Inclusive Mobility Study. In this video, we will demonstrate how to download, install, and use the ArcGIS Build Maps mobile app for our pop-up survey. Once you complete our baseline survey, you will receive an email that contains your personalized username and password to use in the app. For the pop-up survey, the first step will be to download our study app on your mobile phone devices. To download, you can use the link or scan the QR code on your phone. It will direct you to this page on the left. If you are an iPhone user, please use the App Store to download the app. And for Android users, you can use Google Play Store. After downloading the app, the next step will be to install it on your phone. When you start the app for the first time, you will see this screen. Click on Sign in with ArcGIS Online. Next, it will ask your permission to use ArcGIS.com for signing in. Please click continue. It's redirected to the ArcGIS website. Provide the username and password that we sent you in the email. After installing the app, it would be good if you check some general settings first. In the app home screen, you will see two layers. The first one is inclusive mobility study, where it will include the street photos. And the second one is my tracks that we will use for tracking our trips. To check the app setting, please click on this profile icon on the top left corner. For the Android users, it will be on the top right corner. Here in the settings, you will see this auto sync option. Please make sure this is turned on for the entire survey time. Enabling this option will continue syncing the track data and street photos for every 15 minutes. So even if you use the app offline, it will auto sync your data when you will get back to your internet access. And also if you have data shortages, you can change the photo upload size, go to collection settings, and then click on the photo upload size. The default is large here, but you can change it to small or medium. And now if you go back, the app will be all ready to use. After successful logging in, it will use the app for tracking your travel for the next seven days. Before you start tracking for the first time, please make sure that the GPS or location tracking service is on. You can check this from your phone settings. Also, please allow the app to access your location. In the app, you will see this screen. Please turn on my tracks to start recording your trips. It will ask you for how long you want to track your movement and activities. You can select a certain amount of time, such as four hours or eight hours, or you can select until switched off and manually turn off the tracking option at the end of each trip or at the end of seven day survey period. To check your trip data, go inside this inclusive mobility layer and then click on this layer icon from the top right corner. The layer option will pop up, turn on my tracks from that option. The blue dot in the map indicates your location. Zoom in a little bit more near to the blue dot as you start moving. You will see a blue line being generated along your trip route. Once your trip ends, you can turn off tracking from the home screen. It will say upload pending. This notification will disappear once you get access to a Wi-Fi connection and all of your track data has been uploaded. We will also use the app to collect data on your travel experiences during this seven day study period. To do so, please click on the inclusive mobility study icon from the app home screen. Please click on the plus sign on the bottom right corner to record a street photo at your current location. From the pop-up screen below, click at point 
Sometimes it can notify you that your GPS accuracy is poor. For street photos, we will accept poor accuracy, so please continue. The next step would be taking a photo or you can attach a street photo. The app will use your mobile phone. Once you are happy with the screen capture, select use photo. Then scroll up the pop-up screen and fill out the form. These questions are similar to the baseline survey. Click on the three bullet point sign on the right side and then provide your response. To avoid any biasness, I am selecting neutral here for all cases, regardless of the street condition. Please provide your original response when you are participating in the survey. There is one last question on whether or not you have attached a street photo. Please select yes if you have already done that or leave it unanswered until you attach a photo. Now click submit from the top right corner. In Android, the submit option is replaced with a tick mark. Please use that to submit the survey form. Once you have answered all the questions, the red icon on the data point will turn into green. After submitting the observation, it will show you some information in the pop-up screen. The photo ID here is a unique ID assigned to each observation in a sequential order based on their date of creation. Then you can see the creation date, your name as a creator, and uh, whether or not you have answered all the questions for this particular data observation. Then the total observation indicates how many data you have entered. To complete the survey, you need to provide 40 data points and their survey forms need to be completed. The survey start and end date will indicate your seven days time period to participate in the survey. And lastly, there is an edit option that you can use in case you want to go back or change any of your responses. If you click on that option, you will see the survey form again and you can modify and submit your response again. In this next part, I will discuss editing data observations a little bit more in detail. We understand that you will be collecting data while you are on a trip, so we do not expect you to finish the surveys right away. You can initiate a survey during a trip and finish the survey later when you reach to a safe place. For example, here I was on a trip, so identified the location and added the point. Then I took the picture. I left the other responses blank and submitted the form. This time the data point will not turn green as the form is not complete. And when the time was inconvenient, I took a look at the map and all the red points here have incomplete survey form. I zoomed in and then selected one incomplete data point by clicking on it. Once selected, the pop-up screen will show up. I checked the attachment first to recall the street photo. Then I scrolled down to the editing option from the pop-up screen and completed the rest of the questions. And now the data point icon is green as it is complete. And we can follow this same procedure to finish the rest of the incomplete surveys. Next, I want to share some tips on taking street photos. Our goal here is to take a look at the street for which you have shared your feedback. For example, if we capture a photo from this angle, we can barely see the road except for its sidewalk. Then, if 
you capture from this angle, this picture is heavily focused on the roadside properties than the actual road segment. Now this one, it is mostly covering the street, but also it is very difficult to identify all the road elements from this angle. If we adjust the camera angle a little bit more, we will be able to see the entire street clearly. For example, this section of the street has three lanes, the sidewalks, and also there are marking for the shadows. So we can call this picture a suitable one for this study. Once you're satisfied with your photo, please continue to fill up the survey form as we discussed earlier. Lastly, here are some checklists for the pop-up surveys. At the end of the seven-day survey period, please make sure that you have added 40 data points. You can do this by selecting any data point on the map and check the total number of observations there and make sure you have 40 total observations. And also, please make sure that you have completed all the survey form. That means all the data points are green now. And finally, please make sure all of your map layer is synced and all of your trip layer has been uploaded. This part of the video is optional. If you want to use the app offline, in that case, you can follow the rest of the video. To download an offline map, click on the three dots on the right side of Inclusive Mobility Study and then select Add Offline Area. Here you will see the map layer. Please zoom out a little bit and then you can see the Franklin County boundary. The dark brown color on this map layer represents the Franklin County boundary. And also you can identify the area by the reference lines of I-70 and I-71. Now you can click download area to download the offline map. You will get a notification when your download is complete. And then you can go inside this offline map area and provide the survey responses as usual. Here on the top, you can see this icon with two arrows. That is the sync icon. And uh, if there's a dot with this icon, that means there are local edits on the map and uh, it needs to be synced. You can click on this icon and then the sync option will pop up. And uh, you can click sync now immediately if you have Wi-Fi connection. And also if you have auto sync enabled, then it will refresh and sync the layer every 15 minutes. Also, there's one more option to sync the offline map. If you go back and then click on the three dots beside this offline map area, you will see the sync option here. And if you click on that, it will sync the data and uh, upload your local edits to our server. There are a few things to remember when you're using the app offline. Please make sure you have enabled auto sync to avoid data loss. And also please make sure that you are syncing the map layer every time you get internet access. And lastly, if you sign out without syncing the data, in that case, the data will be lost. So please, before signing out, please make sure that you have uploaded all of the data layers to our server. So this is all we have. Please let us know if you have any concerns regarding this study, or if you have any questions about using this app. And also please visit our website to know more about our study. And finally, thank you so much for participating in our study.